What's up, and welcome back to Voth Quality Creative. This is an older video, but I wanted to upload it just to show how I started getting into making things and woodworking. I was renting a place, so I was unable to have a dedicated space to have a hobby shop. But I still wanted to make things with my hands. As you can see, with me just moving my motorcycle to make room for a project is pretty comical. I like how I even hit the garbage cans trying to move it from one side of the garage to the other. Unfortunately, not investing the time or resources into making something a little bit more permanent caused me to spend a lot of time with setup, teardown, and making sure things were out of the way. This used to be my setup, as I'm sure many others have had a similar situation with one old sheet of plywood and sawhorses for legs. The setup was so low, after a few hours of doing any task, left me sore and my back aching. So this project was to alleviate any body aches and allow me to be more meaningful with my time while I was working on projects. I had watched countless videos on YouTube of how people had set up their workstations or what kind of tables or bench tops they had made. I landed on making a table that was an abbreviated Ron Paul work table that I had seen Jay Bates make several years before me. I felt like this was going to be a solid option for all of my needs. The holes that you see me cutting out are intended to be cubbies for various tools. At the time, I thought I was going to be super intentional and keep everything organized. But now, having had the work table for a few years, I can assure you that is not the case. Due to the nature of how I work, it's more difficult to access things than I was hoping. Make sure to route over those edges. This will make it so I don't get any splinters. This may have been my first project that I started using pocket holes. These things get a lot of grief, but they make a hobby maker's life a lot easier. These sheets will serve as the sides for the top and bottom of the work table. The pocket holes will secure the top of the workbench with no visible screws. I'll be able to do face screws with the bottom sheet. I'm cutting these sheets down to size, as well as cutting this one in half for the internal supports of the work table top. When cutting the sheet of plywood for the top and bottom, I wanted to be really precise. So I'm measuring and re-measuring over and over again. What's the saying? Measure twice, cut once. I need to learn from that. The dimensions that I wanted for the finished work table were four feet by four feet. So cutting this thing precisely in half would make everything fit together well and make it a lot easier. During these projects, I'm always learning and it gives me immense satisfaction knowing I've made something. I know the title of my channel is both Quality Creative, but it's really me working in the pursuit of quality, getting better every time that I'm in the garage or shop. I definitely make my fair share of mistakes, but projects like these allow me to learn, and since they'll be in the garage, the final aesthetic really doesn't matter to me. The intention of the work table in particular is to beat it up and get it dirty. When I got to this point, I could really see it coming together and was starting to get really excited for all the projects I could make in the future. When I flip the work table over, this is probably the one and only thing about this work table I would change. If I had to do it all over again, I would have left the top solid. I don't use the holes for their intended use, which is clamping things down. Instead, they're just dust ports for any sawdust to fall through, getting all of my tools, screws, and anything else in the cubbies really messy. A lot of the older tools I have were either inherited or gifted to me from people who no longer use them. This is the first chop saw that I ever had and the makeshift station that I would put together to use it. This was a really great way for me to start realizing if this was something I wanted to do as a hobby or if it wasn't for me. So I think borrowing tools and figuring out if something is right for you is a good way to go. When looking at the price of tools and materials, it can definitely be a gut punch, especially if you're just starting out. I know it was for me. Now I think I really just have an obsession with tools, so using and upgrading them is something I also really enjoy. The real problem is finding the time to get to use them. And when I do get to use them, I don't even mind making projects out of construction grade material, or any other material for that matter. I'm not a fine woodworker by any means, but 
I love making small projects for quick wins to make me feel as though I've accomplished something and learned along the way. I tend to overanalyze larger projects and keep putting them off. But again, finding the time to work on large projects is the real issue. Each time I'm in the shop, I'm able to get away from the day job of sitting in a chair in front of a screen. This really takes me back to a simpler space and allows me to slow down and focus, learning tricks and tips that I can file away for later. Since I'm unable to have a more permanent workspace, I use casters on most all of my projects. Making shop projects mobile has made setup and teardown really easy and has allowed me to move everything with ease as I've gone from one home to the next. I like to think I'll be in my current space for a while though. Now that the base is done, I can add the top and send it home. But first, let me drill some more pocket holes. Okay, let's get back to finishing this thing. After securing the top with screws, this thing is pretty much done. I added a shelf on the bottom with the plywood that used to serve as the tabletop on sawhorses. Since making this, I have done countless projects and have sadly used it for storage as well. I can't wait to get back in the garage and make my next project. Thanks for watching.